Hey guys, what's up? We're finally here. YouTube, excited to be here. Um, you guys know me, I'm AJ. Uh, this is my AV Prospector XL 2500. And uh, I'm excited to be here with you guys and finally do a walk around. I know a lot of you have been asking for it. So uh, we're here at Rigged. Unfortunately, it's crazy rainy outside in Southern California. And uh, the guys here at Rigged were nice enough to open up their shop for us to do it here. And uh, I'm very grateful for them also. Happy Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving. We're doing this on Thanksgiving. So here we go. Let's go into it. We'll go to the front and then work our way around to the back and show you guys what's up. We ended up going with uh, Baja Designs. We did some crazy stuff up front here and wanted to be a little bit different and run kind of a different setup. So we ended up going with LP6s in the fog lights. Originally they came with a seven inch fog light. So I knew that was going to work pretty well. And the guy who put it together and fabricate it, Greg, thank you so much. We'll put his little Instagram down at the bottom so you guys can check him out. But he was able to fabricate some brackets. A lot of you guys ask about that um, on Instagram. So he just fabricated them. I don't know exactly what he did, but they work. They're very, very solid on the trail. They don't vibrate or shake and they fit in the pocket pretty well. Next up here, I went to, um, well Baja told me about Axia Alloys um, for this particular part. So these brackets are Axia Alloys. They're fitted to the three inch bar from AEV. This is their bumper. But basically what we did was we just put the mount on top of here, got a three inch clamp, and then they're pretty solid. Um, the only thing that vibrates on the trail is gonna be the bar itself. It's a little vibrating. I don't even know if that's a word, but that's fine. Um, but uh, these lights are awesome. So this is, these are the LP9s. Here from Baja Designs, I went with amber in the middle. And those are set on wide, and then we did spots on the outsides in clear. The backlighting stick, I love it. I think it's really cool. And then the next thing we have is a 20 inch bar. This is the Onyx 6, which is freaking awesome. I had the Onyx 6 40 inch on the Forerunner. Um, that was up top, but I wanted to go a little bit smaller. This gives me really good light. It's also in clear. Um, and that's kind of what we have up front. And then let's see, yeah. Let's talk about the winch and the pulling power that we have. This is a very heavy truck. It does weigh 10,000 pounds fully loaded. It might be a little bit more than that. So what they actually ended up doing was they put a 16.5 um, from Warren up front. It did come with originally from AEV. They usually put a steel cable on here um, and the rollers up front. I opted to get away from that and I went with something a little lighter. I did the synthetic rope from Warren. Um, we put an Epic Fairlead on here and then we ended up going with their Sidewinder. It is rated up to about 16,000, I think. Uh, 18,000 big ones, 18,000 pounds, this little guy right here. So it'll pull the truck out. It'll do what it needs to do. Um, and if you have questions on that, just let me know down below. Other than that, let's talk about the hood right here, right here, guy, right here. Cool. Let's talk about the hood. It is from AEV. Ah, funny bone. It is a still stamped hood. These little louvers here, these little, these guys right here, <laughs> um, they're actually work. They, uh, they do really well. They help with the cooling. And yeah, one of the things that mostly attracted me on the truck itself are obviously the way it looks and the fact that they changed the hood to actually be functional, which is super cool because these diesels, they get very warm. Um, another thing is too, for cooling, a lot of people have asked me, hey man, putting these lights up front in front of the radiator, did you notice anything about cooling? And actually I didn't. So no, I, I haven't. The cooling's been the same. I've been driving this thing for 20,000 miles now and it's been fine. So. We're cool there. Get it? Cool. Okay. <laughs> that was horrible. Uh, so, and then another thing that's cool is we'll show you down below, but there's actually a scoop that actually pushes wind into the intercooler, which is kind of cool. And it's kind of not because it's so low. It is something that we're worried about hitting when we are climbing some rocks or if we're climbing some shelves or anything like that. It's kind of scary. So we'll show you that as well. Other than that, not sure if I touched on the snorkel in this clip or not, but in case we didn't, we'll do it now. But that is an optional snorkel from AEV. I ended up going with a pre-filter setup instead of the Ram Air setup, uh, just because it was a recommendation from AEV and we do a lot of dusty roads. And the pre-filter, in my opinion, aesthetically, I think it looks cooler. It kind of goes with this truck and it just makes it look like that tank or like that big old Caterpillar uh, machine or whatever um, that they kind of modeled the truck or the, the uh, what is it called? Sorry, man, uh, the snorkel. I've messed that up. Good. Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> The headlights on here are actually, they're stock, they're factory. This was a sport package when I bought the truck and then they converted it to an AEV. 
but yeah, these are black housing. This is just off their support package. So these aren't aftermarket, uh, basic lights, projectors, they suck from factory. They're just absolutely horrible, but it is what it is. I don't think I want to change them just because I don't like messing with stuff. I bought this truck for a reason. I didn't want to touch it. The only thing I wanted to do is just add a few things that would make it ours and kind of flow with what we've done in the past. So, but that's about it on the front end. So let's, let's, let's mosey on over to the side here. So under the hood, it's pretty clean. Not much is here, just a big old diesel motor. We ended up going with the Switch Pro 9100. It's tucked nicely in the back against the firewall. And then we actually ended up uh, switching out the batteries, the stock batteries with some Odyssey 950Rs. It's kind of crazy. You need two batteries in this truck to start it. And it's not really, from what I understand, it's not really a dual battery setup. I kind of have it running that way, but I need to figure out a, a better dual battery setup solution so I'm not killing my batteries. But the 850Rs so far, they've been in extremely good um, and powers my fridge and all my lights and everything like that, at least for, I don't know, the 24 hours to the 40 hours that I've been out with everything off. So yeah, cool. All right, so let's talk about wheels and tires because that is probably the number one question I get asked, what size wheels and tires are on this truck? The cool thing about this truck is it came with 40 inch tires. I was blown away too when I first saw the truck and I pulled up to the dealer. I've never seen one in person and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, that is a freaking monster. They are 40 by 13 and a half, R17. I love that it's a 17 inch wheel. Again, it is from AEV. It's a Catla 17 by 10 <whistles> wide, 17 by 10. And again, 40 inch, 40 by 13 and a half. And it sets in the wheel well so good and there's no rubbing, there's nothing. AEV knocked it out of the park with how they did everything here. So the suspension is also from AEV. I won't get too much into detail on that just because there's a lot of what they did and I don't wanna botch the story, but if you wanna learn more about it, go on AEV's site, read about the suspension and what they did to get a 40 to fit, okay? I can tell you a couple key points. These fenders right here, they are also from AEV. It comes in this kit or this package if you were to purchase it. But basically, from what I understand, they were able to cut a little bit off the fender, put their own fenders on, move the axle forward, and here you go, 40 inch tires, which is why they call it the Prospector XL. This thing rides really, really well, and I'm, I'm, I'm super impressed by it. Like, I really am, like how well this truck drives daily and on the road or off the road or going through some whoops or just kind of just getting out there and going at it. So yeah, super stoked, but yeah, let me know if you have any more questions either on the tires or the wheels or how are things fit. Um, anything about the suspension and how they actually did it, just kind of go back to the site. Cool. Okay, so it's kind of silly. I have a big truck and it definitely is able to tow stuff, but I don't have really cool tow mirrors. These are the basic mirrors from a 2500, I believe. Maybe down the road, I'll upgrade them if I decide to do that. Uh, you're probably wondering, how do I get up into this truck? Well, there's a really cool thing on this truck. They're called Amp Research Steps. They came with it from the factory or from AEV. They install them there at their shop, or you can get them aftermarket. So if you need to get into your truck, uh, your truck's very high, you can always get those. Under the truck, we actually did some rock lights from Baja Designs. It's a really cool thing to have at night or at camp for like possibly my wife or Oliver or someone who needs to get down from uh, to use the restroom or something like that. We leave them on about 10% and the hole underneath of the truck is lit up for, uh, for visibility. All right, so let's talk about the roof real fast. We do have a go fast camper back there on the truck. We have mounted up there is the Max Tracks, and then we have also a Goal Zero 100 watt panel but I'll explain more about that as we get to the back of the truck and kind of see why we have those accessories up there. All right, so on the side of the GFC, we decided to mount a Baja S1. This is a basic scene light is what we're gonna use it for. And then one of my favorite things I've actually mounted on the truck is the Kinsman Hardware 270 awning. The reason why it's one of my favorite things is I've never really had an awning where it covered 270 degrees. And having such a big truck and then having Oliver around and things like that, I wanna make sure we have enough shade for those sunny times that we're out in the desert, but Another reason is because it's super easy to, to, like, to bring out. And I don't know, it's just, it just rad. I had it up in the rain in Oregon and we had like three or four dudes under there. We weren't getting wet. I'm sure other awnings do it too, but having that much space in the shade or covering from elements is, is pretty cool. So I'll show you a little bit more about that here in a second. Um, but yeah, that's it. 
Hey, so we're in the back of the truck now. Not much is done here, but we did add a few things that make it easier for us to camp. Um, to go over a couple factory things, the taillights are factory, they're just smoked. Again, it's part of that like sport package from Dodge. It's a Laramie Sport, so it comes with the taillights and the headlights like I mentioned before. And one thing that's really cool from AEV though is the badging on the truck. You can't purchase them separate. So if you actually bought the kit and did it to another 2500, they will not sell you the AEV badging, which is pretty cool and very unique. So um, along with the windshield sticker as well. So pretty, pretty cool there. In the bumper, it is a factory stock bumper. They painted it from the, or AV paints it black. And then we put a couple S2s in here, left and right. Not too sure why I did amber and clear. Someday I'll figure it out, but I'm sure that's gonna be a question you guys have asked before. Um, and then up top here, we have uh, Baja squadrons at a 45 degree angle that kind of puts some light down at camp, but also works really well as a chase light. Other than that, we've got the Go Fast Camper, which we're gonna show you next. And actually, check this out. One more thing on the bumper is the amp research step. So people have asked about that as well. Makes it very convenient to get up into the camper or up in the back of the bed. So that's about it, besides my awesome license plate. Other than that, we're good. All right, let's go. Let's, uh, let's take a peek at the back of the Go Fast. So pretty easy to get in. They're lockable little latches. Pretty much pop both of them, pull up, and voila. Bring the tailgate down. I installed this shock. It's 20 bucks on Amazon. I can link it down below. Um, the 2018 models and below didn't have an easy up tailgate and it's just super convenient and I wanted to put that on there. And as you can see in the back of the truck, we have a lot of stuff for you guys to take a look at. So I think we're gonna jump up here a little bit more and in more detail go over what's in the back. Do you wanna crush? I do. Killer. Hey guys, so. Let's talk about the fridge real quick. This is our Dometic CFX 50. We've had a couple of their fridges. We've had the 40, we've had the 75. We ran the 75 and the 4 and that was a big boy, but it worked out. But yeah, we love our fridge setup. It's great for having fresh food or ice cream or anything that you really want. You can use it as a fridge or you can use it as a freezer, but we, we usually use it for a fridge. And I guess the way we're powering this guy is gonna be through our Blue Seas. We also had the same setup in our 4 runner, so we opted to go with it in the Dodge just because it works so well. But yeah, this is our fridge setup on the slide as well from Dometic, but we love it. Hey, what's up? I know this crazy red lighting's a little devilish, but that's okay. But let's talk about it real quick. So back here or throughout the camper, we did some dome lights from Baja. So we have two red in the back, two white in the front. Helps really well. The red helps well, just kind of keeps some bugs down, things like that. We mounted a bunch of Axia alloy clamp mount style things to the camper to help us put things away as we're kind of going to bed or just have a place to put things like a radio or my phone or possibly a speaker or things like that. Another cool thing too is they do make some cool wireless lights that actually unthread and you just recharge them, which are super, super cool as well. But a really cool thing that I did back here is we ended up putting a Switch Pro Slave um, panel in the back here. Let me move this heater real fast. And I want to talk to you more about that because we've getting a, we're, we're getting a lot of questions about it. Basically, it's a slave panel that works off the main unit. The main unit is up front, and then this one is just a mimic. So anything that's going on up front is going to be happening back here, or anything that's happening back here is going to be going on up front. But this just kind of makes it easier for us to access all the lights with a hard button instead of going through our Bluetooth and our phone or scrambling for the phone up, up top or whatever and then having to turn on like, I don't know, an emergency button that I set up like this right here, you hit that button and every single light will pop on and kind of illuminate your whole camp area. So this is crucial. This is, this is probably one of my favorite things I've done to the truck as well. Oh man, all right. So, hey, you're back, okay. So let's talk about a few more things that are kind of like in the truck bed. Um, we haven't talked too much about the camper just yet, but in the truck bed, a few things that don't really leave is my tool or kind of like you can take them in and out. Our front runner packs here. Uh, we have a little bit of water here for just kind of washing hands, doing dishes, things like that. A step because this truck is enormous and I need it to close everything basically. Tools in the back. We've got another Pelican case back here for um, other accessories that I use, camera gear, things like that. One of another piece of favorite gear here is going to be the Outer Limit Supply. Those dudes are super awesome. If you need a med kit, it's put together and just has everything that you need that's the way to go. So hit those guys up. Again, a bunch of more Axia mounts holding our fire extinguisher. We have these really cool hooks. We kind of hang stuff on either lights or keys or I kind of use it for the power tank hose for, you know, going back and forth. 
Um, and then of course, on the SDHQ rack, which is holding all this stuff, is gonna be our power tanks. These are 15 pound bottles. I have one red, one, one black. No reason behind that, just did it that way. I thought the red would stand out in photos since that's what we do. Um, and then the SDHQ rack, that's what's holding all of this stuff, which is super rad. And what you can see I'm leaning on is another full size 40 inch big boy tire. So this is back here as well. It still gives us ample room for the camper. And right now I just have it set up in office mode because I want to show you guys that. But basically this panel right here slides that direction, which will give me two other panels that I put here and that makes it into a full camper. And that's where you sleep. But for office purposes, or I guess you could say my office on the go, I want to show you guys how that's set up and give you an idea of what, to, what we do there on the road. Hey, so uh, welcome to my office. This is it, this is what we do. So as you know, I'm a photographer. So on the road, I'm always shooting out images of people or editing or editing a wedding on the road. Whatever I need to do, I bring the equipment to make that possible. So uh, we have our Pelican cases, which you know house all of our camera gear. We have our iPad, we have a laptop. Uh, we use Goal Zero units. We either have an Eddie 200, a 400, or a 1400 to recharge all of our gear, including our camera, our laptops, anything electronic that we're gonna have um, is gonna get recharged by them. We have a way to plug in our solar panel up top into those units to give us a charge during the day. And yeah, but this is pretty much it. I have my phone set up here on actually a really cool little system from Skosh. And yeah, that's, that's, this is the office and it's, it's super, super comfortable. I can put one of these pads or whatever on what I'm sitting on, basically sitting on those front runner packs that you had earlier um, or that you saw earlier. But yeah, this is, this is what I do. This is where I'm at. This is where I sleep and this is where I work when I'm on the road. So hope you enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy it. It's pretty cool. All right. So a couple of things I wanted to go over in the interior, not too much. I'm sure all of you have seen inside of a Dodge Ram before, but a couple of things from AEV, they do embroider the headrest. So that's something that you can't get from them separately. They also put their badging inside of the instrument cluster, which you also can't get separately. So it's kind of unique to the truck. A couple things that I changed is I just put a couple mounts from Scotia in here to hold my radio. Uh, it's not hardwired or anything like that. It's definitely a handheld. Uh, and then of course we put our Switch Pros unit inside of the dash here. And then we're using a Garmin Overlander. But other than that stuff, I haven't changed much. You don't need to do much to the interior of these. It's, it's just super luxury and, and uh, it works for us for what we're doing so far. And if we need to make changes, we will. But in the back seat, there are some cool things. They have like a flat deck that you can make totally flat back there and sleep if you wanted to. But other than that, that's it. Cool. Can we, like, can we get, oh, okay. Ugh. All right, finally done. We did it. We finally made our walk around video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that it was informative and I hope that we answered some questions that you might have had. If you have more questions, leave them down below in the comments. Go ahead and subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more footage coming, trying to get these done, maybe bi-weekly, maybe once every month. Either way, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below. If you have any questions at all, would be glad to answer them when we get a chance. So thanks again. Hope you liked the video and we'll see you soon. Thanks.